Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today I'll be taking you guys behind the scenes of a shoot that I'm on. So come on, I'll show you the cameras. All right, so we're actually running a five camera shoot. So the A camera for this one is the C500 Mark II. It's over here. Uh, we're running the Zeiss Supreme Primes on that. For this look I wanted, really sort of a crisp and a kind of modern look. Basically the opposite of what the Kawas are. So the Kawas are really like tons of flair, tons of character. These are the opposite, super sharp, super, super crispy. Um, that's our A cam. Our B cam is another C500 Mark II. We rented this one from my friends at Evidence Camera. And then we also have a couple other C70s. So we have three C70s. Um, this is our C cam. We got a C70 over here for our D cam. And then our top down camera, the E cam, is a C70 as well. So what's cool about that is we actually did some of the remote triggering from the Wi-Fi. With our top down angle, we originally had it with the C70 and it was on a 25 millimeter lens, but it's on a super 35 sensor. So it's not giving you the full 25 millimeters like you get on a full frame. It's actually giving you probably about the equivalent of a 35 or 37 mil. And so it was a little too cropped in for the way that we're doing our top down shot with the Minimax. So what we did is we switched it over to the speed booster and we're just gonna use EF glass. Now, is it perfectly the same? Does it match exactly the same as the Zeiss lenses? No, it doesn't. But one nice thing is with the browser remote control that you can do from your computer, I'll put some B-roll of what that is, but basically you can hook up to the C70's Wi-Fi using a Wi-Fi adapter. You can actually control autofocus as well as uh, trigger the recording to start and stop. So we don't have to go reach up for our top-down camera. We can basically sit behind our computer and trigger the start and stop uh, using this Wi-Fi adapter. So I'll go ahead and link that part that we had to get down below. Shout out to Charles from Canon for uh, letting me know which part we needed to use. All right, so one of the things we're doing right now, since we're running five cameras, I'm going through and checking all the cameras to make sure there's scratch audio running. We're gonna be running a slate, so I'll put a B-roll clip of what the slate is, but what it does is it indicates what roll number you're on and what clip number you're on for every camera, as well as gives you a nice sync clap right in the beginning of the clip. So it's easy to match all five cameras up to the same exact timeline. This is So in terms of lighting, we just wanted a really big soft push. So we're using three of the Aperture 600Ds, pushed through a 12 by 12 frame. And what that's doing is that's creating one gigantic light source that just basically pushes in and gives a nice big soft wash of light over the whole set. Now, since we have windows in our shot, the light level is kind of changing on the outside. But what I do in the beginning of the day is I'll expose where I want the window. So I'll make the exposure darker. So basically the windows are not gonna be clipping or blowing out at all. And then from there, I'll add in as much light as I need to. So this was basically what we found worked for us and I think it gave a really nice look. So fun fact about my friend Dave here, I always work with Dave. Dave was featured on a very prominent Instagram account. Um, I'm not gonna say exactly what it was called. It was called, um, you know, a uh, little bit not so great rigs. It's called Shitty Rigs. It, I'm gonna screenshot the picture and put it in, but it was pretty epic. Dave was out in Africa, right? You can tell the story. Yeah, we were, we were working in Africa and we didn't bring any C-stands with us because obviously you can't really travel. And uh, when you work in places like Uganda, which is where we were, it's really hard to get just like normal stuff. So we had this one rig that uh, we needed a C-stand on because I wanted an overhead light. And the only thing I could find was a stack of chairs. And so basically I stacked up some chairs and uh, just did it that way. So hopefully we won't be featured on any Instagram accounts. The aforementioned this Instagram accounts. This is definitely accounts. a shitty rig. Yeah. This is definitely a shitty rig. Anytime you do any type of overhead rigging when it's going to be ab above talent, a really good practice to do, which should really just, you always want to do it, is you want to make sure you use a safety cable. So this, this is like a metal safety cable. In the event that it falls, it'll be latched to something else that's on the stand that basically it'd be like a last line of defense so it wouldn't hit your talent. Did we already talk about this? The unfortunate thing about the C70, it doesn't give you a LUT over the HDMI, so we're looking at a log image. But there's a cool firmware that Canon just announced that fixes this problem, so thank you, Canon, for listening. I know there's a guy that talked about it in a video that said we need to fix that. But anyways, yeah, this is the same, right? Shutter 180, 
ISO 800, F4, F2.8. Uh, so one of the one of the things that I always encourage people to do is take jobs, even if you're not totally confident in it, and you might make some mistakes, but you might also learn that you did a perfectly good job. And so I happened to be on a shoot with Cassie back in the day. I'll see if I could find some old photos or something to put in, but I had never done white background photography, but my friend Matt that I knew from boxing hit me up. He's like, hey, can you do these photos for us? If I would have never said yes to that job, I would have never probably got the seven or eight or nine jobs that came after it. So, you know, my encouragement would be just challenge yourself. If there's some a job that maybe you you think it might be a little too difficult and you might just want to say, hey, I want to get somebody else to do this or give it to someone more qualified, challenge yourself because who knows, you might just do a great job. But also do the homework too. Try to learn everything you can about the topic. You can learn anything on YouTube now. So that's kind of what my motivation is for even doing YouTube. This, this lens that we're on, this is the Zeiss 28 to 80. One of the cool things about this lens is it matches with the Zeiss Supreme Primes. So that was kind of part of the reason why we picked it. But the second reason is, is it's a parfocal zoom lens. So that means you could zoom in, you could be at 28 and then boom, zoom in all the way at 80. It's gonna retain that same focus. So you don't have to refocus once you zoom. So if you're on like a Canon 24 to 70 or Canon 24 to 105, you're gonna have to refocus when you zoom in. But that's one of the nice things about this lens. So Dave, who's operating this camera all day today on the dolly, he can sort of be on a wide and then if our guy Tommy starts talking about maybe footwork and he wants to punch in, he can zoom in and he's not gonna have to refocus the lens. So that's one of the nice things about this that's a little better than if you're using just sort of like a standard photo zoom lens. So one of the things with the C70 is these core batteries that we're running, they're pretty cool actually. It's got a D-tap built in and it just, it can actually fit in that normal Canon slot. So I've actually been using these batteries recently and I really like them. I mean, obviously they stick out quite a bit, so they're not good for something like a gimbal. But what's cool is you can just take a D-tap, plug it right in. So if you're powering like a Teradek, then you can get power to it and still keep that kind of small form factor without having to run a full V-mount setup. So that's kind of a nice little thing. And I'll link those down below if you guys are interested. So for the, the sliders, this one's the new uh, Sockler Active Head, and it's on the SERP Magic Carpet Pro. So this is a pretty cool setup. One thing I like about this is it's a little bit smaller and easier to carry around. So the Dana doll is pretty huge. It's usually like a two-man effort if you want to move it. This one, let's say you want to move this, you could kind of just pick it up from the outside and scoot it around. That's one of the cool things about this. Uh, the Dana doll is, is cool because it's kind of like the tried and true setup. This is what everybody's used to working with, and most DPs, or first ACs or whoever's helping you set up is gonna kinda know how to work this. So that's, um, that's why we rented this one. So one of the important things when you wanna look like you're a member of NSYNC is that you use a headset mic. So that's what we'll be doing today Fine, for, <laughs> for Aaron. Aaron's childhood dream has always been to be a member of NSYNC. And actually, he asked me in the BTS video if he could show his NSYNC dance moves. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, dang. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I love Nick Lachey. <laughs> cool, here you go, drop it down. 56K, so 5600. I'm gonna be on the same settings as Dave, so ND4 stops. Yep, uh, You're wide open on your lens, T2.9. On the zoom, whatever you want, ISO 100, shutter 180. Yep. 23.98. You're in 4K, C-Log 2. One of the cool things about working with Cassie as the producer, you guys know I always talk about the snacks. Yes. Most of the other sets of mine just have freaking pretzels, man. But these guys, if you've ever had a perfect bar, they're absolutely delicious and nutritious. So this is my snack for the day. So one thing with multicam shoots, I always like to route all the cameras back to one place. So I am cam mopping the A cam, but it's basically just locked off, locked focus, lock framing, so I'm not really doing too much. But we have the other guys that are opting the slider and the Dana Dolly. But what I like to do is be able to have eyes on all the cameras at once. So I'll route all five cameras back to one place. And then Cassie, who's our producer for the shoot, she'll keep an eye on all the script and make sure that our guys are hitting all their bullet points. And then I'll kind of keep an eye on all, all the things like lighting, framing, making sure nothing weird is happening. And it's important to be able to have all those cameras at one place. Also, I keep the on-screen displays on so what that means is I'll see how much media each camera has, how much battery life, 
And if there's any time we need to stop, I'll know if one of the cameras is low on battery, so I can just jump in and swap that out real quick.